Hey what's going on guys, welcome to your 26 Python 3 tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about how we can go about reading files on our system. Okay then, so one of the cool things that Python can do is allow us to open up files and read the contents of them and then do something with the contents of those files. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do that. Now you might have noticed I've already created this read.py file, it's empty at the minute, but also this files directory and inside there there's two text files, this DNA sequence text file and this Ipsum text file. Now both of these files are on my GitHub repository if you want to download them. What we're going to do is start reading these files starting with this Ipsum file. So before we read anything out of a file we first of all have to open it and the way we do that is by saying open and then whatever the file name is or the path to the file and this is a string so it's in the files directory forward slash ipsum dot text now this is going to open the file but really what we want to do is store a reference to this file in some kind of variable so we can access it down in the code so what i'm going to do is store this in a variable called ipsum underscore file okay so i normally like to do this do underscore file after my variable names when i'm opening up some kind of file all right then, so now what I can do is read this file. And I can do that using a variety of different methods. The first method I'm gonna show you is by using a for loop. So we can actually cycle through this file, this ipsum.txt file, line by line using a for loop. And we're gonna access each line, each time around, each iteration through. So how do we do that? Well, pretty simple. We just say for, then I'm gonna call this variable line. You can call it whatever you want, but line makes sense to me since that's what we're reading each time around for line in ipsum underscore file and then we can just print out this line if we want to so I can say print line and if I save this and run the file then we can see now we print out each line of that file now you're going to notice this gap in between each line now we can strip that off if we want to and we can do that using a method called r strip so now if I save this, I'm gonna come over here and clear the contents of the console and run again. Now we can see the same lines output, but we've stripped out that gap in between each line. Okay, cool. So that's one way we can read the contents of this file using a for loop. Now I wanna show you another way. So I'll come over here and down here, I wanna say lines I equal to ipsum underscore file. Remember, that's this thing right here, our reference to the file. And then we're going to use a method called read lines. And what this method is going to do is read the contents of the file and each line it's going to store as an element, a string in a list. And then we're going to store that list in this variable. So now we have access to this list. What I'm going to do is print this list out to the console over here. So I'm going to say print and then lines. Now, is this going to work? Well, let's try it. So I'll clear first of all, run the file again. And first of all, we get all that text from above up here. But then what we get is this empty list right here. There's nothing in it. Well, I thought we were reading the lines from this file and storing each line in this list. So why is there nothing in it? Well, this is because we've already read through the file. Up here where we went through this for loop, we went down line by line through this file. And by the end, we ended up here in the file at the end. So when we come to read the lines, we're already at the end of the text right here. And there's nothing else to read, which is why we're not adding anything to the list. So what we need to do is reset the cursor over here at the start of the file so we can read the lines again. And we do that using a method called seek. So I'm going to say down here, ipsum underscore file, our reference to the file dot seek and then we pass in what character we want to seek to. Now I want to go to the start, so that's the zeroth character. But if I wanted to go to say the hundredth character, I can do that as well. So anyway, if we seek to the zeroth character, the very start of the file, then we can start to read the lines and store them in this list. So let's save this dude again, clear the console and run again. And now you see right here, this is where the list starts. This is where the list ends and we can see each line is in this list and they're comma separated. You can see the commas right here, right? So that is another way we can read the contents. Now I wanna show you one more method, but to do that, I'm just gonna comment this stuff out. So down here, what I'm gonna do is say, ipsum file, first of all, dot seek, 
and I'm gonna to go to maybe, I don't know, the 50th character. So we're gonna read from the 50th character, right? I'm just doing this to show you. Then what I wanna do is maybe read 100 characters from that point. So I can say file underscore text, then I can say is equal to ipsum underscore file, our reference to the file, dot read. And then in the brackets right here, we can say how many characters we want to read. I want to read 100. So again, this is going to first of all find the 50th character in the file, start there, then it's going to read 100 characters from that point and store that string in this file text variable. So now I just want to print file text to the console and see what happens. So clear this dude and I'll run this again. Now we get 100 characters from the 50th character in, okay? So what we need to do really, once we've finished reading our files and doing whatever we want to do with the data, what we need to do is close this connection because otherwise, if we start opening files but not closing them, it's gonna take a performance hit. We wanna keep them closed when we can. So to do that, to close a file, all we say is ipsum underscore file, our reference, dot close. And that is going to close that file. And now if we try to read it down here, it's not going to work, right? So there we go. That is one way we can open a file, read stuff from it and close it. Now, this is cool, but all this opening and closing down here, not the best idea. Sometimes you forget to close a connection. It happens, right? So I want to show you now a different way to do this. So I'm going to comment all of this junk out. And what we're going to do now is start to read this DNA sequence file instead. But to do that, I'm going to show you a different way, which doesn't require us to close the file afterwards. So the way we do this is by using the with keyword first of all, right? So we're going to say with and then open. Then we're going to pass through the string, which is the location of our file we want to read. So it's in the files directory forward slash DNA underscore sequence.txt so with that open basically we're saying as dna underscore file so what we're doing is we're saying while this is open or with this file open as dna file that's what we're storing this reference as do something right so we have our colon there so now much like we named this reference right here this file ipsum file then we could use methods on that we've named this one dna file and we can use methods on that but this time around all we're going to do is indent our code block here we've got this little colon and we're indenting a code block right so while we're indented we can access this and we can perform methods on it to read data with this thing open and we don't have to close the connection if we want to carry on later we just come out of the code block by not indenting anymore so this is in my opinion a slightly better way to do it all right so the first thing I want to do is read the lines of this file. So I'm going to say again, lines are equal to DNA underscore file, our reference dot read lines. Okay. Now then what I want to do, if you take a look at this file, what I want to do is just print out these things right here, right? So I don't want to print out these things. They start with this open angle bracket or close angle bracket and then says sequence one sequence two and underneath is the actual dna sequence now all i want to print or all i want to store in a list are these things right here not these things so we're going to have to read through this file and some way filter out these sequence lines right here so the keyword there is filter we've already learned about that so what i'm going to do is create a function first of all and it's going to be outside of this code block right here it doesn't need to be inside so I'm going to define this function and it's going to be called sequence underscore filter, right? So what we're going to do is pass in here a line each time that we read. And then if it has, for example, this close angle bracket in it, then we're going to disregard it. If it doesn't, then we're going to keep it in the list. Make sense? If you need a refresher on filters, just hit back to about five tutorials back or something like that. So inside this function, what we're going to do is return a true or false statement, right? Basically. So if we return true, that line that we pass in stays in the list. If we return false, that line is removed from the list. So what I'm going to do is look for this closing bracket. So I'm going to say that not in and then line, which is the line that we pass in. 
So it's going to check to see if that is not in the line. Now, if this is true, if that is not in the line, then we want to keep this in the list. However, if this is false, then we want to take it out. So it's going to return true. If it's not in the line, which is cool, we're keeping that in the list. And false, if it is, it's going to remove that line from the list. Make sense? Cool. So now we have this filter, right? And we're storing our list of all of the lines in here. So what we need to do is apply this filter to this list. So the way we do that is by coming down here and saying filter, and then we pass in the function that we want to use to filter this list. So I'll say sequence underscore filter, which is this thing we just created. Then we pass in what list we want to run through this filter, which is lines. We've just read that right here from this file. Okay, so we're filtering those now. And then what we're going to do is typecast this filter into a list. Remember, we have to typecast it because otherwise it returns some kind of filter object. So I'm going to say list and then pass all of this into the brackets. Now, what I want to do is print the result. So I'm going to print this list. So I'll say print and then open the brackets up again and close them again. And I know this is a lot of brackets. If you want, you can store them in variables instead and then just print the variables. I'm just doing this because I find it easier. So. First of all, we're reading the lines from this file with it open. Then what we're doing is we're using this filter, the sequence filter on the lines, passing each line in once at a time. We're looking for this closing angle bracket. If it's not in the line, then we're going to keep that in the list. If it is in the line, we're going to take it away because we don't want these things in the final list. So we're filtering out those lines. Then what we're doing is we're typecasting that filter into a list and printing it to the console. Make sense? So let's save this and run it. And we can see now we get this list out here and it's removed those lines with the angle brackets in it where it says sequence one, sequence two. And now we just have a list of the actual DNA sequences, which we could do something with later on down the line. There we go. Really cool, right? So, like I said, we don't now have to close this connection because all we do if we want to do something else is come outside of the code block and we can carry on with our program down here and this file will be closed. Okay, so there we go. That's how we open and refile in many different ways. In the next tutorial, what I'm going to do is show you how to write to files.